Good evening, everybody. Uh, lovely to be together again, um, gathering around the Word of God um, and continuing with these Moravian daily texts. I do hope that you've got the Word of God open with you um, and that you are engaging with the Bible for yourself in reading, in study and in prayer, um, and that these evening opportunities are helpful to you to, to get some additional insight, perhaps, but also to encourage one another. So do please uh, go ahead, comment, um, offer your prayer or even your request for prayer as we go along. Um, it's so, so important that we're being formed together in the word of God. Now, um, we're continuing in the book of Romans, um, chapter 2, and, uh, and continuing um, from verse 5 onwards through to 16 today. Um, and yesterday, um, having seen the various kind of exchanges that all of humanity, and then there were some various examples given of the ways in which we exchange God's good and best for our own worst, as a product of um, exchanging the, the sovereignty and the lordship of God um, for our own self-sovereignty, our own self-seeking, um, and the consequence of that. And we were also um, instructed very strongly um, not to depend upon our own self-righteousness and to be people of judgment or partiality, um, uh, but to, um, uh, sorry, penalty, I'm getting ahead of myself, uh, but rather to look upon ourselves. And, and there is a sense within the text here that Paul um, is talking to, to Jews who, because of their religious cultural background, would consider themselves superior. But Paul's saying you're not superior just by means of your birth. Um, what's going on in your heart? What's going on in your behaviour? And so we continue with this, because in verse 5, um, Paul says, but because of your hard and impenitent hearts, you are storing up wrath for, for yourself when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. Hard and impenitent hearts. And you know, I would encourage you to come to the word of God with soft and repentant hearts, um, to come to his spirit um, in that way, and to come together one with another, um, softly, willing to be changed, repentant willing to be changed and then there's a passage that goes on to talk a little bit about works um and uh and, and about the pursuit of our lives if we're pursuing god's glory honor immortality where we're seeking the things of his kingdom to come and the eternal life that is his then he will give um eternal life um and obviously the contrary is true if you obey unrighteousness rather than the truth, if you're self-seeking rather than seeking his glory, um, then there's only wrath and fury, tribulation and distress. Um, and, and whilst that central point is a consistent refrain of the Bible, you might find it a little strange that it's been linked to works. You might make the observation or the objection, aren't we about grace and not works? Well, um, it's not that uh, Paul or the Bible here is saying that you work your way towards eternal life or you work your way away from it necessarily, but rather that the works are a product of the God that you know. Um, you know, is your God the God of self? Is your God the God of the things of this world? In which case the works that flow from that knowledge, from that God, as it were, um, will be evidence of your life. But if you know God, if, indeed, let's reframe it slightly. If you are known by God, then you will make known that, that defining central relationship by means of your works. You don't work your way to salvation. Rather, your salvation is evidenced by these works. Um, and, and that perhaps is our first point for today. Um, but then we want to really just zo zoom in for a moment on verse 11, short, short verse, really profound truth. It says there, for God shows no partiality. Paul's been saying that these realities that he's just unpacked that are open to both those who are Jewish, but also those who are non-Jewish, Gentile, or as it says here, Greek, it's kind of a, used in the same way. But God shows no partiality, no preference. He will treat everybody in an equal or an appropriate manner. You don't get a, a free pass um, before God because of your religious or cultural background, uh, because of your nationality or ethnicity, uh, because of the color of your skin or the language that you speak. Um, just because you've grown up in a Christian home doesn't mean that you automatically uh, are in any sense more loved by God or have more access to God than, than anybody else. 
um, God uh, makes himself known to all humanity. And this is really, really interesting because yesterday we talked about some um, neologisms, the way Paul coins new words to describe um, deep truth. And he, he's doing so again here. In fact, the New Testament on a few occasions does so here to, to describe impartiality because this word, um, it doesn't exist in, in Greek before the New Testament. Um, the word for partiality or to be a respecter of persons, as it were, um, it's in the Old Testament where the, the sense of the word there is that God does not receive face, if, if you can understand. That's the way that partiality is described. Um, he's not moved by appearance or the externals. Uh, he goes to the heart, isn't it? God you know, doesn't uh, judge by the outward appearance, but by the heart. Um, it doesn't matter how powerful, it uh, doesn't matter how smart, it doesn't matter how... Uh, much of the good thing we might do if you know if our heart is corrupted or far from God then that's what God sees now in the New Testament um, there isn't language for that within the Greek so the New Testament writers steeped in the Old Testament um, scriptures that are Jewish traditions they coin language for it um, for, for receiving face and they form new words in James 2 verse 9 uh, there's a new verb um, to be a face receiver, and that, that's actually directed at you and me, um, that we shouldn't show partiality. Um, and in um, there are a couple of other places. There is a, a description of a face receiver in Acts 10, um, and a face receiving that Paul uses in a number of places, Ephesians 6, Colossians 3. Um, it's also here in Romans 2. Um, God doesn't receive the face, the appearance, the outward. God goes to the heart. He shows no partiality. Um, and then, you know, Paul goes on to describe how that actually works. Um, and, you know, I, I'm actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to just read a little summation on this passage from John Piper, who, um, by means of his um, wealth of experience and his better mind <laughs> sums it up better than I think I ever could so I'm just going to read this to you I hope it's helpful to you and um, he puts it like this he says now let's get the whole train of thought before us from verse 11 on first Paul says that there is not partiality with God verse 11 then he defends this in verse 12 by saying that God's judgment will fall according to how we respond to the measure of truth that we have access to. Then he explains, verse 13, that mere hearing of the law is no advantage to the Jew at the judgment day, and not hearing it is no disadvantage to the Gentile, because doing and not hearing is the issue at hand. Then he explains, verses 14 to 15, that the law really is available to those who have no copy of the law of Moses because God has written it on the heart and given all of us a conscience to awaken us to this moral knowledge in our hearts. That's a great summation, isn't it? And that's how this, this sense of God shows no partiality. He doesn't receive face. That's how it unpacks itself here in, in these passages. Um, that you know, whether Gentile or Jew, whether um, au fait with the, the law and, and having that as the tradition or not, um, God will still uh, allow for all to come to faith in him. If you have the law, you'd be judged according to the law. If you don't have the law, you'd be judged according to not having the law. And that's what um, Piper is saying here. Um, he's saying um, you respond to the measure of truth that we have access to, and that's how God's judgment uh, will fall upon all. Um, there is an absolute leveling of the playing field, as is often said. Um, it's level ground for everyone who comes to the foot of the cross. Um, no advantage, no preference, no partiality. Now, this is just this wonderful sense, isn't it? That even if you didn't have a copy of the law of Moses, and hey, look, we Christians, we're so blessed. We have the whole hit, don't we? Um, and we have it all through the lens of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Um, but even if you didn't have a copy of the law of Moses, 
and God has written his morality upon our hearts. And as the writer of Ecclesiastes put it, he's placed that sense of eternity um, in our hearts. Um, we are all without excuse, but we are all with the revelation of God. And so the urge comes, uh, the urgency comes um, to each and every one of us. God will welcome you. Doesn't matter what face you got. Doesn't matter what you consider your status or standing to be. God wants you. He welcomes you. He loves you. He shows no partiality. There's no sin that is uh, more excluding or, or less. That's what we talked a bit about yesterday. Uh, there's no person who deserves a, a greater hearing. Each of us, God has spoken to us in our creation, in fundamentals of who we are. He will judge us according to what we have received. And in the meantime, he says, come, come, everybody, come. Come on, let's pray together, shall we? Lord Jesus Christ, we confess before you that all too often we do receive face. We show preference. Uh, we are partial. And we judge books by their covers all too often. And then we're so offended when others do that to us. Lord God, would you help us in this? Make us new and indeed make us like yourself. For you show no partiality. Rather, you have implanted within each and every one of us a fundamental understanding and capacity to know you and trust in you. We thank you for that. We thank you, we who are already believers, that you've awakened that within us. You've granted us the faith that we've then placed in you. We praise you for your spirit at work within our lives. Uh, and for those perhaps listening who haven't yet placed their trust in you, God, I pray for an awakening of their spirit, a quickening of their spirit, God, that they would become aware of these realities, that they would not feel excluded, but rather they would recognise that whether there is full understanding or partial understanding, you show no partiality and you welcome them. God, let each and every one of us hearing these words come to you in that spirit, come to you, um, not hard of heart and impenitent, but soft, ready to change ready to throw ourselves upon the mercy of a loving God. We thank you for these things. God, we worship you and we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I hope it's been an encouragement to you and um, we'll be continuing tomorrow. Uh, different face, I think it might be. Um, here's hoping. Um, and uh, yeah, wonderful. God bless you. Bye-bye for now.